So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And like I said, I'm recording on two different ways today. I'm doing this one and I'm doing this also. So if you can't see it there, you'll be able to see it here. Okay. So what you see on the board here will be on one and what you see on the screens on another. So the question that I asked you today was what's the difference between kinetic friction and static friction? Here's the difference between kinetic friction and static friction. Kinetic friction is where two things are rubbing together. Static friction is where it's not moving. Think about if you had a balloon and you rubbed it on your hair. So if you rubbed it on your hair, you are actually building up your static friction. That static friction is not released from your body until you touch something else, right? So it's just staying there waiting. So that is the difference between kinetic friction and static friction is kinetic friction is where two substances are rubbing together and static friction is where they're not able to move okay for example here i have this little uh wedge and if i went through and said all right i want to illustrate static friction this would be static friction i'm pushing and i'm applying the force but it is not moving because i have this on the bottom okay now, if I'm talking about kinetic friction, that's when I'm moving this wedge up and is actually overcoming it, even though the bottom and the top are rubbing, because I have some kind of scratchy surface here. If I did the edge here, it would move a whole lot faster. And the reason that it's for is because there's not as much friction on this than it would be for this. Think about shoes. You have different types of shoes, right? different types of shoes, if you're walking, they're harder to walk in because they're dragging the ground. If you had cleats on, right, be able to have those cleats go, you would have to apply a force to overcome. If you were just standing there and you never wore clips, cleats before and you got embedded into the mud, you couldn't move. That's static friction. But then when you moved, as you moved across the fields, it would slow you down because of the substance that it's rubbing on, okay? Everybody understand the difference between kinetic friction and static friction? In the book, it showed a picture of these two things. It's the same car motion. And in this car motion, what it was showing us, it was showing us the diagram. So under here, remember what we did before, right? These are our force diagrams. This is saying force of static friction going this way and the force on the car by you, which is the force applied, they're both equal. If they're both equal, then what would you do? They would be canceled out, static friction. If we're talking about kinetic friction, if you notice that the kinetic friction that's back here is shorter than the applied force here. So my net force, would be in that direction, correct? There's another example of static and kinetic friction. So what they did here at the bottom is they were showing you a picture of a spring scale and a block. So here's a spring scale. What is a spring scale? A spring scale is a weight that you can actually find how much force you're applying. So if I went and put that spring scale on this substance here and pulled it up, you would notice that it's taking about, hmm, about 20 grams to pull up, okay? And the reason that it's four is because of this surface area. If I try to pull it up this way, you will notice it's only five grams as I pull it up. Less force did I have to apply. Down here, 
it just shows you where you have sandpaper, you have a, kind of like a rough table, and then after that you have a high polish table. As you can tell, they're all starting at the same place, but their kinetic friction is a whole lot steeper on the one that doesn't slide as much. The one that slides the fastest doesn't have the steeper slope. On the right hand side, you will see coefficient of kinetic friction. This is something that you need to have in your notes. Remember what I told you last week? Problem that some of my kids were having when they were doing this is they didn't know what the variable stood for. Because the only thing you have to do on your test are being able to figure out what the variable is and how to do the math, right? That's all you got to do. This is a capital F and a small f in kinetic. That is force friction kinetics. Equals. This funny looking U, K, stands for sliding friction. And then this one here is the Fn. That's your force normal. So when you're reading a question and it tells you a sliding friction and tells you what the normal force is, you should be able to find the force of your friction through kinetics. So all of that from here all the way over here is just talking about kinetic. Now it's talking about static friction. So when we're talking about static friction, we're talking about something that can't move, right? Static means standing still. So we're trying to overcome the normal force and change to do the kinetic friction. Yes, sir. Under static friction, uh -huh. is that of motion, like your little part of that? Yes. And then the other one is motion? This one is no motion. This one's motion. Yes. That's moving. That's no not movement. moving and moving. Thank you, babe. So then when we're talking about trying to overcome the normal force to change for kinetic friction, that's static friction. It's not achieving it, so it's not moving. So to be able to do that one, you have FF static. That's the, that's the force, right, of friction static. Has to be less than or equal to US, which is the coefficient of friction, times the force normal. That's what that is there. Underneath here, you will see in your book. This is the notes from yesterday? This is today. Oh. So then, when you look down here, these right here are telling you what kind of surface it is, what is the static friction number, and what the kinetic friction number is. Everybody understand so far? I'm going to give you a minute to kind of look over and figure out what you want to copy. Remember, you don't have to copy everything, but it's good to copy some of it. Is that MK or UK? It's a funny looking U. So it looks just like that. And what that is telling you is that is static friction. Okay, so when you see that symbol, it looks like a funny U. That's what it stands for. I was trying to figure it out. It's okay. So where it says not moving, it's a car. So then you have your friction, your sliding friction. It's going this way. And then you have your force applied on the car by you. And it's going that direction. This is right here. This is just telling you that it's a couch. Yes, sir. It's okay. And what I did was this thing. I actually got these out of the textbook. Okay. And like I said, this video should be better today, where you should be able to come into class and you can listen and write as much notes as you have, and then you don't have to finish them because then you'll have the video to watch too. To see what I have. And what's so great about that is you can take a snapshot of that video as you go through. Trying to overcome the normal force to change it to kinetic friction. Mm. 
understand. That's a lot to write. And you don't, like I said, Jeffrey, you don't have to write everything. Like, These are my notes that I wrote down. You don't have to, like this right here. This right here was just for me if I have a problem that I need to look up on a test. All right, buddy? I see your notes, because I need to go on the test. You know? Well, I don't write my notes for the test. I just take notes as I go. So I don't know. Now, every day when you're taking notes, I'm expecting something that looks like this, along with your problems every day. Okay? Hmm? Now I'm going to show you the page. Yes, I am, and it'll be here for you. Okay. So right now what I want you to do is open up your textbook to page 133. It's going to be on two different videos, Jeff. Oh, so this one be on the, on the video too. Oh, I'm glad. Because what, what you see here is over there too. I'm doing it in two places. Because this is clear right here. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so. All right. So is everybody on page 133 of your textbook? Yeah. Now, not only do you need to have page 133 in your textbook open, you need to open up your calculator that you have for your textbook. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is as you're opening up your, um, your textbook, I'm going to read the problem that it says here. Okay? So I am on page 133. So it says, <coughs> it says a 562 Newton crank is nested on a plane inclined 30 degrees above the horizontal by the components of the crank's weight that is parallel to particular, uh, perpendicular to the plane. I think I need to be on the right page. Sorry, guys. I am on the wrong page. Okay, I was like, wait a minute, those numbers didn't work. Okay, here we go. You pushed a 25 kilogram wooden box across the wooden floor at a constant speed of 1.0 meters per second. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.20. How large are the force on the box that exerted on it? So here we are. So in my, in my book, I wrote the mass at 25 kilograms. So write that down. Acceleration is zero. My velocity is 1.0 meters per second. And my sliding kinetic friction is 0 0.20. This is page 133, 5.2. Yes, sir. And so what I did is I just went and I actually copied the diagram that was on the page. So it's telling you force applied on the box by the boy, force of friction on the box by the ground. And I just drew my vectors. That's all I did. Then I looked for my equation. We are looking for the force of the person on the box. So to be able to do that, the first thing I have to do is I've got to figure out what my normal force is because I don't have one. And remember, normal force is equal to the opposite of the force of gravity. We've done that before. If you remember, we had this and that. You remember that? And if I was doing this, I could do it that way and that way. I am looking for what my normal force is and what my gravity force is. To be able to find that, I'm going to do my mass times my gravity. So where's my mass? There's my mass, 25 kilograms. Where's my gravity? Well, I know gravity is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So if I wanted to, I could probably put that up here too. 
and I multiply those. So get out your calculator, open it up, and do your multiplication of those two things, please. <laughs> so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to look at my mode. Well, my mode needs to be in normal. My other calculator needs to be in radian because there's no degree here. I understand? And so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to do open bracket. I'm going to be doing a negative 25, period, close, open bracket, 9.8, close, and then I'm going to hit the enter key, and I'm going to get 245. That's all I got. Okay? Now, I'm not done yet, am I? Because I'm still not finding what I'm looking for, because I'm looking for the force on the person on the box. So then what I'm going to do is my sliding friction, okay? My sliding friction is 0.20, and I'm going to times that by this force normal that I got. So to 0.20 times 245. What did you get? 50. I got 49. Yeah, I got 49. You said the 20 times 2.5, right? 0.20 times oh. 2.45. It's okay, Jeffrey. We're all good. That there is my answer. So since that's my answer, what Miss Lynn likes is she likes to have a box around her answer. So I'm going to go and take it. I'm coming, Jeffrey. Did you circle the uh, arrow to it? I did, yep, I did both. You said times 2.5, right? Times 245, Jim. 0.20 times 245. Equal. What did you get? You good? No, you're fine. Okay. Let's look at question number 18. Question number 18 in your textbook says that Gwen exerted a 36 Newton horizontal force as she pulled a 52 Newton sled across the cement sidewalk at a constant speed. What is the coefficient of kinetic friction between the sidewalk and the metal sled runner? Here we are. Force normal equals mass times gravity, which equals 52 north, because that's what it told me in the question. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my force friction, and I'm going to divide that by my force normal. Well, my force friction was 36 newtons, and my force normal was 52 newtons. So the only thing I'm doing is taking 36 from 52. So let's do it in our calculator. Hey, my thing says 913. I just excuse me. That that what you got right there? I just did 52 with a little fraction thing. Yes, ma'am. And uh 52 on the bottom, it got nine over 13. Okay. And okay, and give me and if you do nine divided by 13, you should get 0. 0.69. So so since I'm just doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 36 and I'm going to divide it by 52. There's no reason to put it in a fraction. And I get 0.692307. Yeah. Is that what you get? Yeah, that's what I got. I thought I got. Okay. So, good question. Only use the alpha y equal one when you have a lot of things to do with oh. a fraction. With just one, just divide it because it gives you another fraction, doesn't it? And that doesn't help. Because I thought, cause, uh, when you told us earlier in a while back, I thought we always used the Yes, ma'am. And most of the time, you are exactly right. We are going to use it, but when it's something simple, we're not. Okay. So let's look at number 19 now. So number 19 says, Miss Ames is, is dragging a box 
full of books from his office to his car. The box of the books together have a combined weight of 134 newtons. If the coefficient of static friction between the pavement and the box is 0.55, how hard must he push horizontally on the box in order to start the moving? So, what do we have? We're trying to find force of aims on the box. To be able to do that, we need to find out what our force friction is. To be able to do that, we're going to take our sliding friction and times it by our force normal. But in this problem, we have uh, a sliding friction and we have our mass times our gravity. We're going to use this one right here. So we're going to put 0.55 times 134, and that should give us 72, 74. So let's put that in our calculator and make sure. Remember, Ms. Sloan's gonna give you the equation. You just gotta figure out what numbers to do and what your answer is in your calculator. So we're gonna do open bracket, 0.55, close bracket. Open bracket, 134, close bracket, and enter. 73.7. 73.7, and Ms. Sloan, said, okay, there's two significant figures right here, so let's move it up to 74. Everybody good so far? But I thought you only changed the Ma'am? Oh, never mind. I see now. You got it? You sure? Yeah. Okay. So let's look at 20. Number 20 says, Thomas sits on a small rug on a polished wooden floor. The coefficient of the kinetic friction between the rug and the slippery wood floor is 0.12. If Thomas has a weight of 650 newtons, what is the horizontal force is needed to pull the rug and Thomas across at a constant speed? So what I'm trying to find is I'm trying to find my friction force. If I'm trying to find that, I'm going to take my sliding friction, which is 0.12, my force normal, which is 650 pounds newton, and I'm going to multiply those together to get 78. So use your calculator and let's try that. 0.12, 650. I got 78 newtons. I got a question. Ma'am. Okay, like you just said, um, when, we do, when we're doing like that, uh -huh. do we always have to put the zero if it got a zero or no? Or it, no. Or to still give us the same? You don't have to. I just did it so if I had to go back and check, I knew I used the right number. Because okay. sometimes if I put a zero in front of my decimal, it'll let me know to remember to do the decimal. If not, I'm just going to do straight 12. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Let me turn the page because we are not done. How many we get? We had this section right here, and now I'm on the next page. So let's flip to page 134. Nope. Okay, so let's look at the practice problem. Remember, in your notes, it's always best for you to write your practice problem out. So it says here, it says, imagine a force you exert is 25 kilogram on a box on example three is double. So it's taking our example three and we're doubling the number. So our mass is 25 kilograms. Our velocity is 1.0 meters per second. Our time is three seconds. My sliding friction is still 0.20. My force applied on the box by the boy is 98 newtons. How do I know that? Because it told us it's twice as much. Two times 49. We're looking for acceleration. So to be able to do acceleration, we're going to do our number that we have up here, force applied on the, on, by the boy on the box, and we're going to slide that, we're going to subtract that from our sliding kinetic friction times mass times gravity over mass. That's all, all that means. Okay? You slow down a little bit because you're going a little too fast. When you explain it. Okay? Acceleration uh -huh. is the force 
applied on the box by the boy. And you're going to subtract that by your sliding kinetic friction times your mass times your gravity divided by your mass. Okay? That's what that equation says. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this equation, I'm going to go up here and get all my variables, and I'm going to put it in on paper so I can put it in my calculator. Hold on. You see what yes. It? So you didn't give us the answer to the first one. This isn't the answer. I'm just showing I'm you. I'm talking about above that. You got A equals a question mark. I'm looking for A, and to be able to find A, this is my formula okay. I'm going to use. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> I was just trying to show you that's my formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and get all my variables. Okay? So my FAPB is 98 newtons. That's where I got that from. And it tells me I need to subtract. And it says my kinetic friction, which is 0.20. That's where I got that from. And then it says to take my mass, right? That's the M, 25. And I need to times it by gravity, which we know gravity is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And then I'm going to divide everything by that by mass. That's where I get that at. So let's practice putting this formula right here in the calculator. Don't get it actually yet, Miss I won't. If you don't mind. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do our alpha y equal to get our fraction. We're going to do 98 and we're going to subtract that by open bracket 20, open bracket 25, open bracket 9.8. We're going to go over. 25 on the bottom, and then we're going to hit our button. My button tells me it's 1.96 is what my calculator shows me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say it's 2 meters per second. But the problem is, is that's just for acceleration. But I need to do one more thing where I need to find velocity final because it gives us two questions here. The first one has to do with acceleration. Then it has a question about velocity final. What you got? So this is B. She got one point something ninety six. Look, I got one point nine six. But she rounded it. And I just rounded it one point seven. I mean two point zero. And then the B asks us what my velocity final is. So what I'm going to do here is velocity initial times time plus one half of acceleration times time squared. That's a formula. This formula here is where I'm going to plug from up here. So I'm looking for velocity initial. Well, there it is. So I'm going to plug it there. Time, there that is. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to do one half. There's my one half. I'm going to do my acceleration, which is the answer that I got here, which was two meters per second squared. And then I'm going to do my time squared. My time again is three. And I'm going to square it. I'm going to put all that in my calculator. So let's see what we get. And like I said, when I'm videotaping over here, it's going to show you the calculator too. <laughs> so I'm going to do open bracket, 1.0, close bracket, open bracket, 3.0, close bracket. And then plus, I'm going to use my alpha y equal here, ma'am, 1 over 2. I'm going to open up a bracket, 2.0. Close, open up my bracket, 3.0, close, and I'm going to square it, and then I'm going to hit enter. And I got 12. 
I'm giving you the variables. You're just having to put it into the and put it into the calculator and get the correct answer on your test. But if you don't practice while we're doing this, you're not going to do well on the test because you won't know what the answer is. Well, you just got finished having four of them. Number five is Friday. It's Friday. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, really? You have a chapter a week and a test on Friday. Three to four sections a week. Okay? So that here is your A and your B. So let's look at question number 22. And where I'm at is I'm on page 135. It says a 1.4 kilogram block slides freely across a rough surface, such as a block slows down with acceleration at one negative 1 1.25 meters per second squared. What is the coefficient of the kinetic friction between the block and the surface? The only thing we have to do here is we're looking for force net, sliding kinetic friction, force normal. To be able to do that, we're going to take our sliding friction, we're going to divide our acceleration by our gravity, which is 1.25 meters per second squared over 9.8. So we're just going to do just a normal division. So that is 1.25 divided by 9.8. And once I get that, I got 0.12. I got 0.12. Seven five, so I went ahead and rounded it up to point thirteen. That's number twenty-two. Are you writing these down? Because these are the things you have to have. I don't want that page. Yes, sir. I can. Is that better? Okay. So you're on twenty-two, right, Jay? I'm just gonna leave my calculator over here. You know what I see? Yeah. Okay. The video is playing, you know that, right? And it can hear everything you're saying along with my ears. Okay. Don't do that in this class, okay, Jeff? Okay. So number 23 and 24 and 25 is here. I'm going to give you a few minutes to write it down, and then I'm going to go over it with you. So what I'm doing is I'm showing you the steps of how to do these problems. The main purpose and the reason I'm doing it is so that we can work together on these problems so that when you have the test, you can do these at home. That's F N E T. F N E T, correct. Oh. Sorry. We like taking pictures. What are you doing? And where it went? It's here. Just well, what happens is somebody sends me a message and it's trying to do the document camera and it just takes a screenshot. Is that 41 kg? Yes, ma'am. And can I say, if you have your tech book open, baby? And you look at question number 23, you'll probably find the variable that I'm using. No, sir. It's going to be, she's going to post it. But not right now. You want to do the bathroom? Oh, David. Mm -hmm. Good boy. Go real quick. Oh, she said her oyster is 41. 41 kg. Kilogram. Kilogram. Yeah. <laughs> Is that you, Kilogram? Sliding kinetic friction? No, that's not it. Either. Now, Jeff, are you trying Jeffrey, to you can go over on that side if you want, sir, and stand over there when you're not in somebody else's way. This is died. I don't care what you do. It's whatever you do. I'm just trying to give them time so they can process it while I'm talking.
Okay. okay. Number 23. It says in the book, it says you want to move 41 kilogram bookcase to a different place in the living room. If you push with a force of 65 newtons on the bookcase accelerates 0.212 meters per second squared, what is the coefficient of the kinetic friction between the bookcase and the carpet? So what we have here is we have force net equals, and these are the different formulas that you could use. Okay, On the test, this is what you're going to see. You're just going to see this little bit of snapshot. But I wanted to show you how I got the equation. What I did is I wrote out all the formulas for force net, and then I chose the one because the variables that I have. Okay? So, force is 65 newtons. My mass is 41 kilograms. And my acceleration is 0.12 meters per second squared. I got that from the reading assignment. Okay? Then I'm going to divide that by my mass, which is 41 kilograms. Same thing, right? Mm -hmm. And my gravity is always 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So now let's put it in our calculator. If we're doing this problem, the best thing for you to do is your alpha y equal, right? Because there's more than one thing you're doing. So let's do that. Alpha y equal. And we're going to start with 65 newtons first. And I'm going to subtract 41 kilograms. And I'm going to times 0.12 meters. I'm going to go over. Open my bracket to 41 kilograms again. And I'm going to open 9.8. And then I'm going to go over and hit enter. And I get 0.149. So what I did is I took my 1.49 and I rounded it up to 0.15. Did you get that in your calculator? Everybody good? <laughs> Number 24, just ask us to draw what's going on. So 24 says, consider the pushing a box in example problem four, how long would it take for the velocity of the box to double to two meters per second? So, this is where I begin. Here's my velocity. As you can see, my velocity is increasing as I go across. My average acceleration is going in that direction. There's nothing else going in another direction, is it? So, over here is the diagram, force normal and force gravity. Remember, they're opposite. We have force friction going this way and force applied on the person by the box. So, if I'm looking... This here is a coordinate system that shows me my force net. Once I drew it out because it asked me to draw it out, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my equation. Now I'm looking for acceleration. That's velocity final minus velocity initial. Time final minus time initial. We've had that a long time now. So if we're looking for time final, we're going to do velocity final minus velocity initial over acceleration. Taking my numbers, 2 meters per second, subtract 1 meter per second, divided by 2.0 meters per second squared. So if I did that, I'm going to get 0.50 seconds. That's my answer. What did it say in the corner for 25? I know you're not there yet. At the bottom of the book. Yeah, right here. Hit the, uh, hit the, okay, wait, 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 wait. It says that it hits the branch before he is able to stop. Is the answer to the question. So number 25, we'll move this up. You said hit the branch before he able to stop. Stop, correct. So for question number 25, it tells me, it says that KME is driving 23 meters. 
he saw a tree branch laying across the road. He slammed on his brakes when the branch is six meters away. If the coefficient of kinetic friction between the car locking tires and the road is 0.41, will the car stop before hitting the branch? And the answer to that question is no. How do we know that? Yeah, because he's moving too fast. How do we know he's moving too fast? It's because of this. To be able to do this, we have to take our velocity final squared minus our velocity initial squared over our two times acceleration. To be able to do that, we've got, he started at zero, he ended at zero, which is his final velocity, right? Because he's stopping. He was going 23 meters per second squared. And then I'm going to divide that by twice his acceleration. Twice his acceleration is 0.41. And, once, and then our gravity, which is 9.8. And that gives us an answer of... Well, our answer is 66 meters. And that's it. That is the second chapter. We will do chapter number three tomorrow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this recording. You want us to take pictures and put this up? Yes, ma'am. I stopped that recording. I'm stopping.